Whereas ahead. old NRG under finesse used to do a bit more defaulting into site execs. There is a pretty big difference there in terms of how you set your jet up. Speaking of setting jets up, MW has a sheriff and he's playing in that little bait spot over towards heaven. Going for the split here. Paranoia is nice. Cuts his way through. Havoc trying to go for the retake with the flash, but just baited out the util now. NRG looking for a bit of a pivot. They've scared them away, but look at this. Conan and Havoc have read it. Straight there. No flash to set this one up. Havoc just taking a fight. He's just swinging wide. Takes our demon one. There you go. New map, new beginnings, new Havoc. <laughs> Talk about getting area. your confidence back. Four versus four with a minute left in the round. MW, re-exploration now out towards main. That's a jiggle. Wow. Shot through the wall, not enough. Crushes, what was that, right clicks? Yeah. How is the classic beating the sheriff there? It's absurd. Maybe the entrance that they needed now as well. Smoke blocking away, flash on top of it, damage. So a lot of the players have HP, but it's still a two versus four. Spike planted. Going to have a rough time of things. Needs to... Get an opening pick somehow. There was a chance with Marv just peeking. The jiggle, but now showing a bit of respect. Look at this position here. There's the hell player. Any swing available? Not quite. Ethan wasn't in the position for it. So cleared out towards hell. Weren't watching for it though. That re-swing. Now paranoia. All the util. Oh, that's immaculate. It's layers, isn't it? Leaves Conan in an impossible situation. Out of range of the turret, but as soon as he steps forward as well, Ethan, he's still going to deal with him, and he's not going to be granted the chance or opportunity. Three bullets left time. It's an impossibility now. Pistol round win for NRG. They're toying with them, playing with their food. And that's a new turret change there. It's only got a 100-degree uh, radius in the, the, the sight line, so... You know, something to think about. Not the biggest change in the world. But NRG very comfortably took that away. Basically, the important kill was Crashing's being able to get his pick onto uh, MW, as yeah. MW re-export into A main. I mean, it's, it's like an info re-clear over towards A, and Crashies wins it, and that just opens up the site completely for them. You're expecting the defending team to be generally favored on Ascent. Um, but at the same time, Furia, the more aggressive they play, the more they play against the strengths of the map, I think, actually. So it's another one where MW's got to have that patience and that discipline that Fury have talked about trying to develop across this offseason. Uh, look, I mean, look at the way that Ethan is set up to try to punish aggression through B main. They've got a flash off a turret. They're ready for it. They are so ready. And W. And these are the kind of preparations that NRG will have been going through to try to shut down what they view as the main win condition. And I think most people view as the main win condition for Fury. Especially when you've got a map pool that has two big jet maps to open mm -hmm. up. They've got game plans to try to deal with MW. But again, discipline, patience, MW not giving himself away early on. And that puts the onus actually on NRG to make something happen. Now, as it happens, there's nobody home at A. <laughs> it's a gamble. They're stack. just literally going to walk into A, get nobody the plan down. Nobody is home. And this is going to be the least eventful round you've ever seen. It is so life. slow. But d diligent. It is diligent, yeah, taking the time with it, making sure that, you know, like you said, mid-aggression was accounted left. for. 30 seconds left. And, and just to use this opportunity to talk a little bit about the team style. So this is a blending of Evil Geniuses of last year, the championship team, with NRG or that kind of optic core, really, right? Victor's got a rifle. I'm gonna lose it. Come oh, on, Victor! Close. Listen, Close. it might be an eco, but I was getting excited. Yeah. So are the sponsors of the ace. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, oh, oh, poor, poor thing. What a waste. What a waste. Yeah, we'll not be letting them pick up that Vandal. So, just to talk up a little bit, though, this NRG super team has been a blend of the championship squad with that old Optic core. And they approach the game in very different ways. Obviously, neither of the IGLs of, this, of those teams are actually on this super team. But the two different approaches that they had, you know, Finesse tends to call like a default into some kind of exec and trying to mix up the pacing and disguise what he's doing. You see EG, they were all about trying to take aggressive map control and set up Demon 1 to fight things and try and bait their opponents into reclaiming. So I'm really interested to see what this version of the team does. Yeah, Are they similar to one of the teams or the other? Do they have their own new calling style? Out of the knife. 
swings down, clears through into mid. Just dodging. Shadows traveling. And this is very much that kind of default, making it seem like they're playing for mid control, but actually going into an A split. Players there. Oh my. For the mid not accounted for. Victor was hoping for the B main push. So that's where he set his sights. Well, the play is there. Lit up with the paranoia going for an attempt havoc. There it is! Balance with the confidence. Khalil pushing out, not showing any respect in the slightest. And that is a dismantling of what NRG wanted to do in this round. And it's because they disrespected all of that utility. NRG threw the util to make it look like they were going down mid, and Furia said, nah. Yeah. And MW just literally walked up mid and was like, there's no one here, mate. Kind of so, with murder almost. Yeah, if you can if you can call your opponent's bluff in those situations, <laughs> you're gonna benefit massively because you just get so much more info about what they're actually trying to do. You need the confidence oh, though wow. to be able to fight against that. Oh, round four, Havoc's double the amount of kills he's got. Compared to map number one. Yeah, and, and and again, it's not like we were saying at the end of Breeze. Havoc's a terrible player. No. You're expecting him to go 2 and 20 in every game. No, he's been extremely successful at the tier 2 level, and it just looks like he had some nerves in map 1, yeah. which is super understandable. Bit of a one-off when you're playing against a new super team on the block. Certainly. Good salvage, denying that bonus round. Here we go, fast play. play. Yeah. Paranoia, but a flash. Everybody was playing anti-flash positions, Ethan. And this this actually is how Furia could lose this game after looking so good at being able to put up rounds like the one previous. Because the more aggressive they play the defense, the more I think they're going to play into NRG. But that's an interesting re-clear to catch Victor. Pull things back into a 4v4. MC's three. Walking around, this is a little bit awkward in terms of the defensive players here. Furia just wondering where they can really stand. Yeah, see, he's spotting anything out. It's all about that timing. Oh, he's found it. Classic play style of his, always just making sure that he can creep in at the right time. Knife against the dice. Suppression across the board. He's done to Havoc. Now we see the Hunter's Fury. It's going to be offloaded to try and least support them. Havoc still gets the one. In the meantime, in all of that sound and chaos and confusion, it's Conan. He's walked his way past the smoke. Demon 1 falls 2v2 with 37 seconds left. Yeah. Khalil, flanks on flanks. All the way on flanks here. Leave it to Crashies. It's a 1v2. Crashies! Not bullets, but a wonderful chance, a wonderful attempt. And you can't have watched that and not believed for a moment that that was going to happen. Ooh. Just couldn't quite get the spray down there. Great work dealing with that aggro lurk from Marv, though. It felt like for a moment, Conan hadn't quite accounted for the fact that Marv could be all the way up into grass. And then Khalil came back on the flank and was able to handle it. But, Ren, if we're talking about calling styles on the attack side, this version of NRG is not going into big set executes. Yeah. They're actually a little trickly in terms of how they're committing. Really, quite slow, cautious. Top flash play, plenty to receive, plenty of targets. Look at that, the layers again of the util. Trying to use the TP, but Marty couldn't see a bloody thing. Didn't know where he was going, TP straight into the wall here. And of course it's the eco, so... These early kills being collected up, maybe a chance for Fury to build up some key ultimates. But also, the fact that NRG picked this map allowed Furia to pick defense, and because they're favored, and because they're getting into situations like this, this has got to be a morale buildup for yeah. people like Havoc, for people like MW, I mean, for the rest of the team, for, to believe that they can accomplish it. With how close map one was, they should be favored to get up to a bit of a lead here. It's still fine for NRG if they only put like four on the board, honestly, but that is gonna really light a fire under Furia. Last it might just start standing. getting a little bit more difficult Spike as well. Paying attention to the money situation. You might want to try and get an op in MW's hands. I mean, cleo has got the money for it. And when you get that op on the defense side of Ascent in your Jets, I mean, it's just going to be open up plenty of opportunities. And we saw what it did on Breeze. That was one of the big turning points, was getting the operator into MW's hand. Yeah. Uh, and he wasn't always trying to push super aggressively forward. Oh. But yeah, I agree with that. Let's see if they opt into it. I mean, you're unlikely to do it in a round like this because nobody lost a rifle. Right yeah, but assuming we see somebody die here, we could certainly see a reinvestment for round seven. This one, aggressive re-clear strategy over towards A main. Really cool thing to throw in occasionally. 
you're not pushing out beyond the bounds of where Ascent is really powerful on defense. You're just allowing the map to work for you, catching your attacking opponents in tight choke points. NLG with a timeout now. Something's got to change. And I think the ult situation is actually the thing that's going to change the most. They're, they're heading into this next round with a lockdown and an ult command to be able to work with. And those are big ultimates to be able to cook up some kind of attacking idea. And that's probably, I think, why they've called the timeout, because Chet's probably got a specific strategy that he wants them to run. And coming out of the timeout, these are... Whereas NRG, at least at the moment, we've got a small sample size, but on the attack side, they feel like quite a fluid team. They're trying to gain information, take map Poking control. and prodding, yeah. seeing where people are. Yeah. Using and, the info at like the minute mark. And I think after these timeouts, it's probably going to be a bit of a stylistic shift because again, from what we know of Chet, he tends to call more structured strategies coming out of the timeout. So we'll just have to wait and see. As I say, this is a new super team. We don't exactly know what the style is going to be. Feigning a bit of aggression. I mean, the only player in mid here is Havoc with the flash. It looks like they're going to go for the recon dart wall bang strat though with Conan. And there's a lot of players uh, over yeah. towards Tyler. through the Odin. I mean, if Crashies decides to drone at the beginning there, he could get caught, but he's, he's just chilling. Yeah, he's just chilling. Be up close. So they were aware of it. NRG containing. But again, for NRG, this looks like they're taking mid control. They've knifed market. They're droning down. From Fury's point of view, you've got to think, is Demon 1 following this? And Havoc is immediately jiggle peeking to realize, no, Demon 1 is not there in mid. So they're trying to you know, get a situation where Demon 1 can find a pick without Fury expecting it on B. But Fury actually have all the info about where NRG are playing right now. Especially now. The thing is, the spike is on the other side, so this is never going to become a BXX. You look at the minimap, there's just no way. Reclear in AMA. I mean, not just a reclear. This is... Repush. I mean, they're going for some frozen yogurt. Run. They're out in gelato. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lockdown. Spammable spot. Spammable spot. Shock Dart, it was a little bit too high actually with the aim. I think the bullets were just sailing right over it, so it's not going to be taken out. Awkward. Have to play out back here, but no players detained. Now they're starting to make their moves in towards the B side, but it lit up again. Nobody's taking care of this Utah. That's Demon 1, I believe Norton 5. Now Crashies, maybe, can claim some space. Left. Get themselves into the site with Ethan with that plan, but MW was right behind them. Look at this flank time, you can <laughs> see it. Odin. Poking all the way out, gives him away. Talk about Pinocchio's nose. That's online, have a. Back in the fight, back in the action. It's a flash over the top. No casualties off the back of it. And this post plant position is not ideal for NRG. You've got three players playing onto the site. Cover going Mark out. still has that paranoia. Can he cook anything up with that? Looks like he's going to try and use it on these lane players. Going to need a miracle for time, maybe. Working on their side. There's a paranoia, big one. Three players colliding and still come down to just really the minute details. Moving their way forwards. What are these one ways? Fury it up. They had the players, they had the advantage there. And it's a clean retake. But oh, Liazzi is cooking with those yeah. one ways. <laughs> those are awesome. I don't know how much they particularly help, but it did make it a little bit more difficult for NRG to fight their way out of that. A huge player advantage though. And, and I like that you've drawn attention to Demon 1 being 0 and 5, because it's not like Demon 1's failing his duels, right? It's not like we're seeing Demon 1 trying to take aggressive angles, fight a player and lose him. In fact, actually, it's that he's getting snarled up as he tries to enter the site. He's getting caught by the initiator, you yeah. feel, most of the time. It's one of the storylines we were talking about leading into this, honestly, was the difference between the initiator players and that map one, but what a time to come alive. And thus far, Furia have been playing a really nice defense, not overextending too much. And MW actually picking his time to push out Gelato in that previous round and got onto a, a beautiful flank for the retake. So, take timing it quite nicely. This is an aggressive hold of Cat War with Liazzi tucked in this corner. Yeah. But this looks more like an Evil Genius's round from last year, where Demon One is hunting for a pick over towards mid. And then the team has options of, should we go cat? Should we split B? Should we go back to A? Playing a 1-3-1 a one, one default with Demon 1 the tip of the spear. And now somebody's called at the minute mark for them to group up on A. That's where MW is holding with the AWP. A main's going to be theirs. Can MW do anything about this? Because 
Cavalry is here, looking at it. That's a wide face, jumping around, but it at least fires off the first shot, and they're trying to flood into what this one. Victor right from behind, the lurk timing. They do not expect a bloody thing all the way through. He's played two. Immaculate play from NRG, setting that one up. The entire faint into A, just to allow Victor to get those two kills. The weaponry is still not great, though. They haven't even recovered the second rifle from the player that they killed. Still the player advantage. When you take these close quarter fights, it doesn't matter that you've got one of the players on a sting of damage. Wow, ah, lucky to be alive. They're saving. They're saving. They They're have to. They're saving. They have to. Off retake into that. When they set up in the post bank close to the side, you can't clear all of them. What a round to pull out from NRG. Uh, they, they've been looking to try to set that play up in one of the previous rounds, too. We saw Marv try to get on that aggro lurk timing, but look at this. I mean, also just catches a flash of Havoc. And this gap now has got to be plugged for Furia. NRG doing a great job there. The IGL, the call to faint as if it's going to be a big explosion into A. And actually, it's that aggro lurk timing that's the playmaker. And, and of course, when NRG is sending utility into A and making it look like an exec, the, the A players are going to look towards the site. Yeah. Right? They, they think that's where the danger is coming from. But now they're going to have to adjust. They're either going to need three people at A and one watching catwalk, or somebody plays aggro in mid and tries to catch the player walking down cat. You know, there's many different ways to try to plug that gap, but Fury have got to come up with one of them. And at the moment, I mean, this one is unusual. Khalil, Khalil with yeah. the op. They switched it over, swapping out the guns. So they're going to be going for, it looks like, it's a, it's a weird one, like a tower's crunch, I think, through main. So dark, deep into mid. Paranoia as well, dash forward. So just trying to catch one of those plays, but look at it. Victor is out of there. He is high-tailing it. And the call from NRG is react into A, into Khalil. Did they spot the fact that he has an op? Flash is nice. That's really nice. Pushes them off the angle for but a moment. Enough as well for the team to get right into the site. And they've gained all that ground. Hunter's Fury is late. Conan, no targets to be found. And here goes the plan. Ethan. Spike planted. How does this retake come online? It will be operate again. Drone, what does it see? What player is close now? Shot darts. Against the side, nades as well. Time is ticking. Paranoia was saved for just that moment with the dart as well. And their waves of all that util. Hello, still the counter spot. Khalil, he finds that one. It's up to Crashies pushing forward to help out Demon One as well. Reinforcements might have arrived and just in time. But Demon One still, he can't get the kill. It's up to Victor holding down towards main. Smoke in his face. He doesn't have a clue where they are. The fuse being stuck. Plenty of time. What a retake from Furia. I don't know how they managed to get both of those players in hell. It Same. felt like NRG's setup should have rewarded them, in fact, because they had a double flash play with a recon dart up into hell. The players up top were lit up by the recon dart. I mean, that much delay. But at the same time, the counter drop. spam just came through from Furia yeah, and both two, players in hell. Two kills into the players Got in hell. Look at this. Ah, lit up. That's why. Wow. Perfect stuff. Really nice. And what an interesting smoke again from Liasi. It's not on the spike, but it's just kind of like out there for him to try to teleport into, even though he got caught. The retakers from Heaven are able to utilize some of it. And here we go, another tiles crunch. They're into it again. This time they are not ready. NRG, the discipline has been there to contain, but they just get overwhelmed. I mean, do you expect that to happen again the very next round? Two rounds in a row. But yeah. Fury decide the exact same strategy is going to work. Very unexpected. The first to try to force the reaction into A, uh, and the second, they just clean up all the kills, and Khalil was still there, ready. Ethan. Right, traded. Spike down. Even just a mob. Hello. One kill, flash dodge, but he's really just being approached now from B main angles. All Spike three dropped down, he has his ult. I mean, there's chances here, but he really just needs to find this one. He doesn't have a clue yet. Havoc, sidestep, six to three. Look at that score, I don't remember, you know, listen. There's a sent defense side. Usually that team is going to be favored as Furia. Yeah, but, but it's looking time, clean. At the same time, there are two big differences, right? The aggressive uh, plays on defense are actually working. They're coming up good. And the other big thing is that Havoc has gone from the bottom of the scoreboard, 2 and 20, to now the top of the scoreboard. Yeah, what a turnaround. He's got into the groove. And that is always going to make a difference. And they were playing with half a player in the first map because presumably the nerves were getting to it. They're going to have so much confidence here as well. And W. 
That is a nice attempt. Look at the, the ult from Marv. He's all the way behind them. Yep, straight onto heaven. Demon One's in there. Finally, a kill to be found. Liazzi off to the side there, but oh, it's Ethan. Stinger taking the space once more. It's all the way there. The plan now down. What's the post plan going to be looking like? Knives. Demon One. Choosing to use him. Oh, Ethan. So little help. So low, and they're all being spammed down. Demon one down at a 45 health. Crashes though, he's playing his time with this one. He's got his own ult as well, playing really tucked as well in a safe position straight through main as long as he survives. It's really just quite oh. unlosable. Demon one will really just ensure it, won't he? And out of nowhere, there comes a round from the NRG. As quickly, as quickly as the player went the way of Furia with that tiles crunch. Instantly, NRG ants back on an eco and just swarmed onto them. Yeah. Marv creating pressure from behind with the Omen ult. I mean, that's, it's quite basic, the idea, really. And yet so effective from NRG because they swarm together. Just on that fourth round, pretty essential stuff. I see the setup. But yeah. We're getting series of kills. Demon Finally, Demon One as well. Just really getting some value. Enemy yeah. yeah, he was slow to get off the mark. I don't think because of his, you know, uh, mechanics I mean, it, dropping off or anything. Uh, he's just being caught out a lot when he's just been trying to get the first one into the side this time. Attack up. Yeah, that's interesting. Flash again. Maybe from that prior conditioning. So a similar attempt to what they were trying earlier in the half. Hoping a player will be caught there. TP, I've oh, spotted, so they know he's not going to be into that corner. Yeah, and in theory, that means that Fury have control of A main. Uh, and in reality, they do too. Yeah, Liazzi's it's... just holding it. Yeah, Liazzi's got post. Uh, Demon One's been on a very passive angle with this operator, just looking for MW to make an aggro peek into him. But MW, again, patience, discipline, making sure that he's playing in situations where NRG can't punish him and tossing the ball back into NRG's court. It's now the attackers who've got to come up with an idea as the time ticks down. Nice knife timing. They do have Ethan's ult though, and Liazzi playing this close one and done spot. I mean, Ethan takes the operator. They're going for the exit. Really? Okay. Flashbang. Flash through over the top MW, forced off the line. And here it is. Oh, there it is lit up. Lovely util. Bill was cleared out of that spot. Havoc trying to reposition. Attempted a flood defense. And now you might just have to call this one. This is now two rounds in a row where mollies have made a massive difference. In the previous eco round where they exact onto A, it was Victor's Nano Swarm that forced Havoc into a bad position over towards the switch. This round, they throw the KO molly from Ethan and it catches the player towards logs. This is how NRG are being able to create advantages as they go for their exec. It's making a big difference for them. And this is one of the few rounds actually that we've seen in this entire match where the time gets low NRG are forced to do something, and they set up a big exec, and it works beautifully. They were struggling, I think, a little bit with that earlier on. Oh. Barely, barely with the elbow peeking out. They do, not, they do not want to lose that operator. Oh, it's pretty critical in order for them to just be able to hold. Oh. On the other side, though, NRG's money is doing fine because they won that eco round. Last round picked up all the guns the off the floor. So now this is a really good attack side. It is for anyway. NRG. It's just turned on his head. In the last two rounds. That's how Ascent works. Making it 6-6 six to six would be really fantastic for them. But yeah, I mean, you just see him from these replays. The util to flush them out. Singing the praises of the initiators, but it really showed there. And Liazzi playing that one and done. Punished. Final round now. Of this first half of Ascent. <laughs> with Demon 1 and Marv picking up the off at the start of the round. Okay. And Marv just using it, you know, just in case. Yeah. MW is getting a little bit silly over towards Gelato, perhaps? I would assume he has a rifle ready to go, too. Shadows. MW is going to be trying to set himself up here at the top mid. Not worried about the cross. Good info, though, from that knife. Yeah. They know exactly where MW is playing. They know where the operator is now. They know where... You know, the aggression's happening too, because the turret caught contact over towards B main. So it's really passive here for NRG. And again, Demon 1 not following the drone. That was a real hallmark of how EG played their attack sides, was that e Demon 1 would go aggressive behind the drone down mid. 
They're not really breaking this alarm bar, pressuring Furia too much. And it means that it's going to put pressure on this A split actually working and finding success. Liazzi is the first challenge. Oh, here we go. Lots of players to meet him. He's got some back. They're going to go for a reclick. They have Utah for this. Oh, it's paranoia. This is mad. It's paranoia, but Havoc, I mean, he's too far ahead of it. That's mad. Paranoia did not catch. Come Again, Furia just playing ahead of where the map kind of rewards the defenders. And here we go. Using that to clear him out. Liazzi has to respect it. Has to back away. Hunter's Fury. Large connection onto the one. TP to disengage as well. He barely survives his life. Mar facing them. Really just eager to try and take the fight straight to them now with two players left standing. A Furia looks so damn you unlikely. Lockdown has to be used, but the counter lockdown in play. Do they have the Utah to clear this one? It's a nade. Wasn't quite entirely on the mark. But respect both of this one. <laughs> Crashies. <laughs> Spotted. <laughs> that might make it winnable for Furia. That's yeah, 3v2. Let's make some big plays though. They know that these players are going to be cleared out at least towards main mainly because of that lockdown that was used. Oh, what a shot, Demon 1. Popping off at that one, that was a sharp kill. And he leaves it to Khalil. What can you do in this situation, son? I mean, absolutely nothing, but you gotta make a go of it. It's not given any sort of sightline. There it is. Swing from Ethan, six to six. Solid finish from NRG. Yeah, half the Switching look like... Oh, I'm looking towards them to kind of set the tempo for what well, they're gonna be doing there. And send plays as a map as well, where the attackers really forced as well to try and drag as much of that utility out to, to lays as possible before they go into the site hits. You don't want to get bogged down, you know, you got to try and pull maybe the paranoia dart nades. Uh, look at this, Brent. It, they made it Furia trying to make it look like it was A, exploding onto B. There's still three NRG players, four on B. They didn't buy it for a moment. Oh, at all. They've got the dart close to the corner. Doesn't actually tag onto anybody. MW close into logs, returning the fire. This time NRG, they want to try and take the fight, Conan. As he found those, two kills, precise, straight to the cranium. I believe he's marved in a difficult spot, but he has a lot of util to work with. One smoke. Spike planted. On Paranoia, just contacting though, doesn't want to reveal his position. It's a double face at the right time for Furia, and a pistol round gained. That's the kind of stuff that Furia have been working on. Great closeout of the round, making sure that they're disciplined in those kind of moments. Three out of four pistol rounds going the way of Furia. That is certainly going to help. I mean, if NRG had won the pistol, they might have just run away with this map. So Furia get out to a lead early in the second half. Now it's about how much they can actually hold on to that. Yeah, slams down the brakes for NRG with all that momentum that they were accruing. But and, and just something to point out, we are seeing basically full ethos coming out for the team after they lose pistol. That is a massive shift compared to last year, where we would see People going for force buys, people going for yep. sheriff buys, relying on the half armor. Even Please though there us. has only been, I think, one outlaw picked in the entire match so far, I, I think, anyway. It, it does seem to have an impact on yeah, I mean, the early round economy. All you gotta do is hold tap, see what their money's looking like on the buy round. And if you suspect that they're only gonna be able to buy a rifle with the half armor, yeah. you pick it up. Cheap enough purchase. The threat is actually more dangerous than reality. Yeah, when it comes to the outlaw. Bit of a repeat of what we saw earlier, I think, in the first half as well. Just the gamble stack goes a bit wrong. NRG finally grouping up here, but not gonna have too many chances. Now, they do have a bit of util. A dart, a flash, paranoia from Marv, so. Could get dangerous with it. Smoke popping out deep, but maybe they don't want to waste the money. Keep it, play the discipline style as well. Just go down to the spike, deny any chance for Fury to build up those ults or get any extra pocket money. And I think this next half coming up is going to be where we can see if Conan is able to outcall <laughs> NRG's defense. They're <laughs> just throwing a nade in there. Good <laughs> measure. I mean, what is the need, man? Yeah. What is the need? All good. Whatever, I suppose. <laughs> get yourself an ult orb. It's a pretty important <laughs> ultimate to try to get online. But uh, yeah, to me, the player that I'm taking an eye on over towards Furia, it's not really any of the player's performance. It's how they call. Because I think that's going to be incredibly important. Navigating those defensive setups that NRG have is the key to victory for Furia. And if Conan can call that, after being on the bench last year, getting called up to the main roster, picking up the captain's shoes as IGL, this could be his moment. Massive. A lead granted for Furia. They'd love to extend it a little bit deeper now on the bonus. 
with some danger to the bonus as well. I mean, they've got two rifles. I like that lineup. Yeah. It's a nice one from a non-committed position. Flash now through, but this time they do want to commit. All the util being expended. Look at that. There was even a paranoia that cleared through into Gen, but nobody's onto the site. Full containment is the name of the game. NRG. All their players alive. And you're playing Flash ready. Yeah. NRG are playing retake with paranoia. Two flashes. Nade. Recon. Everything. Bloody oh. hell. What the hell is going on there? Liati still with the two. E3. We're making mincemeat of all of them. MW. Is the last one left. In the blink of an eye, this has gone all skew with still damage and a shock tower to finish. While I'm hyping up all the utility that they have, Ethan just ran in and <laughs> murked everyone. Yeah. What was that, a three piece? Yeah, he got a 3k. Outdoing Liazi, who was blind just spraying down too. But yeah, Ethan, clean, precise. You'll see it in the replay here. Lines up Liazi, who got a pick. Takes down another and then oh. leads Conan. Almost with the fourth. Nasty, nasty play. And again, Ethan, more of a supportive player on this roster. Yeah. And yet, he's still able to come out with stuff like that. That's the danger of this one. So the bonus didn't convert like Furia perhaps were hoping for. Got enough money though to get this buy online, and now using the util. They can aim main control. Do they want to rush into this one again? Like suppressing them. Slams down the brakes, and there's a re-exploration into mid. That's really three players looking here from NRG. They are fully pushed up. Victor, a chance maybe. Yeah, they've waded right into it. Another nade walk straight into the side line. You kidding me? Let's do that with the bulldog. Plenty of players left standing as well. NRG, they hold all the ground in the world. Mid, be in their domain. Oof. Point to that round as a defensive call, a read on what's happening on the other side, a masterpiece. And how did the... It's not like they threw a huge amount of utility to stop Furia from going for that A exec. They just decided to explore mid to see if it was an A split. When it wasn't, they decided to pause because they hadn't heard anything A, see if they were going to walk down cat. And they were holding just the most oh, bizarre go, angles. Go, yeah. I don't know if it was a KO knife earlier they fought on a lot of them. My kid is out there. I mean, Here. yeah, dude, NRG are calling it. My KJ is out mid. <laughs> yeah. My Killjoy is just walking into mid and killing them all. Walking into mid, but I, I mean, I don't know well, if that's what just a, a reaction off of it, but yeah, it's a great setup, a great play in the moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah, personally, I think what they were trying to do is maybe catch the other half of an ace split off guard. Uh -huh. And then when they realized that they had a chance to catch people as they re export into mid, they just set up on the nastiest angles. How does Furia get a read on that? There are. As far as I'm aware, no other team's playing that kind of style of defense and snap. That's strange. Eight they, to eight, evened up. And it's not like it was uh, given away by any piece of utility. They didn't throw a huge amount of utility mid. They just kind of walked in there. So there's nothing for Furia to get the read on. Does that incentivize Furia to do more A hits? Does that mean that they need to take mid control? It's pretty difficult to come up with an answer to stuff like that. And NRG have tied things up. Yeah, not just that as well, though. The economy's taking a knock for Furia, so yeah. NRG set up to take the lead in this map, in the series. It's a big one. Furia the timeout, obviously, anything that they've been calling, probably going to be for the next one. We saw NRG, a lot of the rounds that they managed to get online on their own attack side was coming from these half-by rounds. Maybe Furia can do something similar. But Furia so far in this match have had very little success on the attack side. Just get, been getting completely outdone. Tag. Mark. Yeah, he's going to be lit up there. Has to use the paranoia and the smoke to try and exchange and get out of there. Ethan still watching. He's got his man's back and Marv's still alive and kicking. Not for much longer. A bit of run and gun in action. Spike Stinger. A. Still a gun you can buy. It looked like he unplugged his keyboard there. Yeah. Just staring at the wall. He's like, I got my one. The rest of you, uh, <laughs> I give be up. Fine. And look at this load all the way down. NRG are just holding with three players. I mean, when they don't hear the plant go down, they are so ready for the exploration somewhere else. Ooh. The looked away for just a moment. Hold up, rifle, bloody hell, and W updraft, avoiding the spam. He's in a really precarious spot. They have to double face this one now. How is that kill not claimed? Khalil 60 have two bullets, two targets. Gets the reload. Nade pushing him back. 
out of the corner, doesn't know where they could essentially be watching. Drop down onto Dice as Ethan, he's playing this so bloody well. Out wide, crouched in the off angle. Nicely done. It looked utterly thorough. I mean, it's a somewhat similar idea to the previous, where if you don't hear all of the exec utility going down on A, immediately alarm bells are ringing in NRG set. Unfortunately, Crashies looked backwards because he was thinking, wait, have they actually lurked all the way down mid behind yeah. the grass? But well, you could see that the thought process was there. It's grunting into the mic, <laughs> as you do. NRG with massive retake ultimates here. Not playing super heavily committed to the A site. Instead, looking to set Demon 1 up on B. Look at him, he's playing yeah, a bit sure back not. as well, just waiting to see if they use the paranoia, which they will. Yeah, clears it through. Demon 1's back out of there. It does connect onto him though. Fast, over the top, dashing into the back. That's Victor though, crossfire set up, and Demon 1's there. The smoke just a little bit delayed, trying to push past it and away through it with the Hunter's Fury. Conan was hoping to clear the way for his team. They don't get access to the site. Crashies alone, a little isolated, and yet Furia stopped in the choke point. He has unable got the to spike. Work further forward. He's, he's dug close to market. He's got the spike. And Demon One. He knows. How does he know? Maybe here in the TP, I'm not too sure, but Drone not seeing anything. Ooh. What is Liazzi's evacuation plan here? Not sure. Walking. All the way through into the smoke, drop down, the counter spam. It's there, necessary really, securing that trade, but I mean, with the spike in such a precarious spot, there's no chance. What a shot, nails him straight to the wall. Hey, Liazzi just door dashed the spike to him. <laughs> he just <laughs> just sent it straight into the smoke. I can understand he's trying to make the play there. But he was stuck in an awkward position, but man, this round has been difficult for Furia. 30 seconds in. left. Again, just an unwinnable position. I spike. Oh, he's pre fine a jump spot. 20 seconds. A chance, maybe, if Crashies will fall, but he's just playing this one so patiently, so passively. And look at that! What for the flash timing? That's Ethan! Yeah. Real immaculate play there of their defense towards B. And it's not like NRG needed to be fighting the choke point necessarily too much. Victor's just in a perfect position to collect MW. Then Demon One picks one up with the operator. And after that, the rest of Fury are scared to go in. Nice, nice. beautiful. Good hold. Good a very clean defensive round. Yep, admiring their own work. The old version of NRG with finesse at the helm, I thought they pulled off their most beautiful stuff on the attack side. But in this match, Get this version of NRG has just been extraordinary on defense. Might be a very different identity that we see from this squad. How much can you really do now if you are Furia? Knock down once more to the Sheriff, buys knives, and W. It's making a lot of noise though. They're gonna be able to hear these players out towards Cat, even the ping, I think that's Marv. Saying they could be working their way into mid. They have no control of that area. They could do with an MW miracle round. Drone to set him up. There's a lot actually, getting a ton of value there with the drone MW. Backing away. Marved. Jiggle, spotted by Havoc. With the wall though. Elliot, take a look at that flash as well. Really so gonna push good. him back. The Leave KO lineups on so many of these maps have just been uh, affected. This is 35 seconds now. They're running straight into an anchoring, hard anchoring setup. They've got Killjoy Molly's all, all the way down towards lane. Left. Victor and Crashies are set up for success. Old forwards is all being watched for. They just know so damn aware. Oh, furious. Oh my goodness, MW. Lucky to find that one, but we're 15 seconds left. Hello, there's a lot. Really not much time at all. You've got to try and make your way across here onto the lane. It's all being watched. Khalil with three, eight seconds. Have to try and stick this one now. A chance with the timing of Demon 1. Just holding for it in case it was faked for Buddy. One moment, 69 health. Alarm bot down. Has to know he's dead. Through the box. You're joking. But that is precise. What did he see? Show uh, me the, the replay. The alarm bot. I think genuinely. I mean, Demon 1, he heard the reload, for starters, so he can get onto a more aggressive angle. Hopefully we see it in the replay, but... 
you know, he's just crept up onto that. That's oh. Yeah, look at this. Oh. <laughs> I mean, nice. he does see a hat. Yeah, it's too clean. Yeah, he's got around. Yeah, disgusting. Okay, so no miracle there for Furia. They're going to have to pull this one out, grind out every single round. And these are going to get super difficult. Massive ults available, but for both teams. Yeah. Doesn't look like they want to go fast into this one, though. Tank side up for MW. He needs to get value. We haven't seen NRG go for any of these, you know, super aggressive flash and dash kind of plays. But Demon One is trying to get posted on a really deep line here. I'm there. Turret's taken care of. They've got to know that there's an op behind this. Yeah, it's a, such a common play. How do they clear it though? A flash. Here comes from Havoc. No, it was a team block. Oh my! And that's not Havoc's fault. You know, just maybe a lack of communication. Maybe Khalil just swinging a little bit too early. That could have been a nice punish on Demon Monday. In fact, he even got some good damage onto it. Yeah. Minute left in the round, set the sights over towards A, but NRG side. are so damn ready. There's a double molly set up here. I think usually oh, to wow. try to stop anybody pushing onto the lockdown, and Victor just rips it, not yeah. even playing it for the retake. Holding it to delay. A main control given up. Havoc running his way all the way up to the top side of mid. He's hoping to try and pull some of these players away. He's a one-man army right now, but NRG with them taking care of that one. Ethan is left up to him. Absolutely unbelievable. Mark towards the back. Nice jiggle. Spots the movement. No, he could have readjusted and re-pushed the positioning there and lit up like a Christmas tree. I was told, Bren, that IGLs are supposed to get worse individually when they, you know, pick up the responsibilities, the mental bandwidth. Yeah. So why is Ethan performing so damn well? Top fragging. Uh, it's not just the top fragging. Uh, on the first map, his utility was immaculate. And, and the setups on this map have still been really good too. Yeah, they have. He's had some really fantastic calls on defense in terms of how he's adjusted stuff around. I mean, that could, of course, be some of the players on the team, but we'll give the guy credit. We do for all the other IGLs in the scene. But yeah, it does not seem to have dropped off in the slightest, despite picking up the the calling stick for the team. Furia staring down a battle of defeat. Nice flash to re-clear and take control of A main for them, but it's only one round. That's all NRG need, and they've got lots of chances. Car going out. In the smoke. Just waiting for the right timing there, so blocking off main. You should Everyone run. grouped up. Here's a lockdown, but an alt in kind. This is going to be removing that threat almost immediately with a Hunter's Fury. So, players of NRG, they can't anchor this one. Marv, good paranoia. Needs some help though from the rest of his team. And there it is, Ethan, immediately. The collapsing collide and collision course. Send them straight to the lower bracket. NRG!